short term we will see in, in the solar sector yes. an incredible reduction of players. Mm -hmm. We have three main sectors. If you look to the production companies, you have thin film players, you have crystalline silicon players, the traditional technology, and uh, then in the end you also have module makers. Now the pain is, is incredible uh, this year and next year, mm -hmm. because if, you just, if I just go through the numbers, thin film, 200 thin film initiatives in the world, mm -hmm. At most 50 will be there next year. Big pain, thin film. And crystalline, crystalline, we see like uh, 140 crystalline silicon companies around the world. Only 40 will be there by end of next year. Module and cell makers will become one. One profit pool. That means a lot, a lot of pain in the short term. However, what's the good news? The good news really is, is that um, the growth driven by feed-in tariffs, but even more so by the incredible cost reductions. You remember in the, in, uh, up in the room, um, I quoted like our, you know, what we see as pricing f five million, one year down to three and a half million, that simply translates in very low costs of selling electricity. Mm -hmm. So going down to those levels of energy costs makes, makes solar highly competitive. Evidently, there's still a big issue. The big issue really is um, how long are the feed-in tariffs, but we do see the decline in cost price going to the level where uh, autonomously, without feed-in tariffs, we will find uh, solar being competitive to fossil. In some regions, the first moment, I remember it well, with CIRA in 2003, um, they were studying, and in the CIRA conference in 2004, they suddenly said, wow, in a region in Japan, solar has become cheaper than fossil because in that region in Japan they included the grid replacement costs in the final cost price. Now, as soon as that happens, um, I'm, I'm not ju just optimistic, I just know uh, where to start. It's a huge volume. If the impediments by authorities, if the impediments by local governments are not taken away, the impediments basically being uh, regulation in the favor of the fossil sector, yeah. you know, fossil sector US, 200 million in subsidies in the US alone, 200 billion of subsidies in one year, and in the solar sector, in total last year, 6 billion. And still, the notion has been built by very successful lobbying and campaigning and PR campaigns that apparently clean energy is highly subsidized, and fossil energy, who, who, who got more than 30 times more, 30 times more is not subsidized. So this deep notion of unfair pricing should be made um, transparent. And my proposal here would be that the International Energy Agency, you know, it's a perfect third party authority, that is simply make transparent how actually energy pricing is regulated. Because as soon as that happens, any individual will go for normal solar homes, decentralized, energy stuff on your roof and no longer be on the grid. Nowadays, many of the visitors on this uh, conference, um, there are a lot who are new to the clean energy space, so they didn't start eight years ago, when we started uh, with Good Energies. Uh, it was the same, same feel as now. Anton Milner was starting a company in Tallinn, it was called Q-Cells, beautiful name. But after we made our investment agreement, one of, the, one of his main clients, uh, was no longer there. That's exactly the same what happens now. Yeah. Clients are suddenly nowhere there. Yeah. But it is a deja vu. So um, I feel the spirit here is like, you know, not optimistic at all. Yeah. But if you've been long enough in the industry like we have been, yeah. then it's something that already happened and it takes off again. Mm -hmm.